Hey everyone, Victor is here, and if thinking about synthesizing molecules like this via the Diels-Alder reaction makes you dizzy, you are not alone. So give me a few minutes here, and I'll show you how to easily predict the Diels-Alder reactants. So let's start by looking at the Diels-Alder reaction itself. Let's say we have these two molecules reacting with each other, and as a result of this reaction we are going to move our electrons in this circular way, like so, and if I number my atoms as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. In this particular example, I'm going to make new bonds between carbons 4 and 5, carbons 1 and 6, and there will be a double bond between carbons 2 and 3. So my final product is going to look something like that, where my atoms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 are right over here, and the new bonds that I have created are right there between numbers 4 and 5 and 1 and 6. Pretty familiar, right? Now, the important thing that we want to take away from here is the fact that the deals all the reaction is always going to make a six-membered ring with a double bond, sometimes even with two double bonds if our dienophile is the triple bond, but typically it's going to be six-membered ring with a double bond and maybe some sort of a, you know, substitute like electron withdrawing groups and whatnot sitting on it. And looking at this structure, the new bonds are always going to be over here, sort of like a cross from our double bond. So if you want to think your double bond as the director for your uh, new bonds, the new bonds are going to be across from this double bond like so. And another important thing to keep in mind, that if I number my atoms as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, atoms 1 through 4 are going to be coming from our diene, while atoms 5 and 6 are going to be coming from our dienophile. So let's take a look at the example over here. In this case, just like I would expect, I'm seeing a six-membered ring with a double bond, so to start my analysis, I'm going to number my double bond as carbons number 2 and number 3. Then I'm going to number the rest of my ring here, and I'm going to indicate for myself that the new bonds that I have made here are between 1 and 6 and 4 and 5. So carbons 1 through 4, those guys are going to be coming from my diene, while carbons 5 and 6 are coming from my dienophile. So breaking my molecule at these two positions, I'm going to get the starting materials that look like that. Now notice that I do have a double bond between carbons 1 and 2 and carbons 3 and 4. Those are the double bonds in our starting material. In the product, there will be only one double bond between 2 and 3, but in the starting material, diene, while has two double bonds. Likewise, between my carbons 5 and 6, I have a double bond in that diena file that is connected to my nitriles, to my electron withdrawing groups here. So whenever you are predicting your starting materials, remember that you are not just ripping the molecule apart, but you are also moving the electrons around to recreate those double bonds that you had in your starting materials to begin with. But of course, the molecule is not always going to be presented to you in the most convenient way possible. Let's say we have something like this, where again, Again, I have my six-membered ring, but looks like my double bond is kind of in a weird spot. But that part really doesn't matter. I'm going to approach that in the same algorithmic way. So I'm going to say that atoms of my double bond over here are atoms 2 and 3. Then, like in the previous case, I'm going to renumber my ring, and I'm also going to indicate for myself that I've made new bonds between 1 and 6 and 5 and 4, so that is where my molecule comes together during this deals all the reaction. Which means that in this case, this part of the molecule over here actually comes from my diene, while this guy on the bottom comes from my diene file. And so now, if I break my molecule into the starting materials, I'm going to have a picture like that, where the diene file, this portion is the bottom of the molecule, and the diene, this part, is the top part of the molecule. And if I were to renumber my atoms that I had in my six-membered ring before, I can see that atoms 1 through 4 are the part of my diene, and atoms 5 and 6 are the part of my diene file here. Pretty straightforward, right? Now, some of you might argue, well, what about the stereochemistry of these molecules, because we know that stereochemistry is a huge part of the deals all the reaction. Well, yes, you 
are correct. When it comes to the stereochemistry of the Diels-Alder the reaction, we absolutely have to take that into consideration as well. So let's take a look at this reaction over here. When we are predicting the product and the stereochemistry of the Diels-Alder reaction, we remember that the out groups must be cis to the electron withdrawing groups, which means that in this case we are going to get a product looking like this, while at the same time if we have any in groups, like I have in my next example, then those in groups are going to be trans to my electron withdrawing groups in my final product. We remember that as the endo rule. And the cis-trans trick is basically an easy shortcut how we can determine the stereochemistry of the Diels-Alder reaction. I do have a dedicated tutorial on that, so if you need a refresher, make sure you check that one out. So how are we going to apply that to the actual example? Well, let's say we have a molecule that looks like this and we need to predict the starting materials that gave that product in the Diels-Alder reaction. Well, there are a few things that I'm going to notice here right away. Way. The first thing is that my carbonyl over here is going to be my electron withdrawing group. I am also going to be making the bonds right over here in my six-membered ring, so that's where I am going to be splitting my molecule. I have one group here, this methoxide, that group is trans to my electron withdrawing group, which means that in the original molecule that must be an in group. And I also have another group in this molecule, the methyl group down there, let me actually show it as an ME, and that one is cis to my electron withdrawing group, which means that the methyl group in my starting material must be the out group. So drawing my starting materials, I would get two molecules looking like this, where my methoxy group over here, that is an in group, and my methyl group is the out group of my diene. So so if stereochemistry is given to you and your instructor does not say that you can ignore the stereochemistry, you absolutely have to identify which groups are in and which groups are out and draw those things appropriately. Now remember this guy from the beginning of the video? And yes, I know, this molecule looks pretty scary. But if we apply the algorithm that I just described to you, it will be super easy for us to predict the starting materials for this molecule. So the first thing that I'm seeing right away is my double bond, so the atoms of my double bond are carbons number 2 and 3. Then I'm going to number the rest of my six-membered ring with a double bond, and also I'm going to indicate the bonds that I have created via my Diels-Alder reaction, so those are going to be the uh, bonds between the atoms 1 and 6 and atoms 4 and 5, which pretty much tells me how I'm going to be splitting my molecule, which means that the starting materials should be this pair over here, and I'm going to renumber my atoms for the clarity sake so you can see which atoms are which. Now, of course, if we wanted to make it more fun, we would add some stereochemistry here. Let's say like this, I'm going to put wedges on all of my bonds. The first thing that I am noticing right away is that my methoxy group and my uh, electron withdrawing group, my ester, they are cis to each other, which means that my methoxy group should have been the out group, so I will indicate to myself that that must be an out group in my starting material, and the way I drew my molecule, it is in fact out group in my diene. And the rest of the stereochemistry in this molecule is going to stay unchanged. So it doesn't really matter how big or intimidating your molecule molecule might be, for as long as you're using this approach, you will always be able to get your starting materials without any problems. And of course, I cannot talk about the Diels-Alder reaction and not mention the screaming nemesis of every organic chemistry student, which is the intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction. So if I analyze my molecule over here, I'm going to start by identifying my double bond and numbering those atoms as atoms 2 and 3. Numbering the rest of my molecule I can see that the new bonds that I'm making via my Diels-Alder reaction are going to be right over here between 1 and 6, and right over here between 4 and 5. Which actually means, if I pay close attention to my molecule, that I end up with one continuous structure over here that going to make my starting material, so essentially this is the product of the intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction, where my starting material looks like this this. And if I renumber all of my atoms, you can see that I've made a new bond over here between 4 and 5 and 1 and 6, creating this ring that 
essentially made my bicyclic structure at the end. And of course, if I was feeling fancy and I didn't want to uh, leave my molecule in this form, I can redraw it in a more open chain fashion like this, where my atoms 1 through 4 are a part of the diene, my atoms 5 and 6 are part of my diene file, and also let's number our inner chain as A, B and C like that, so my atoms A, B and C are right over here in the middle of my molecule. But of course, just being an intramolecular deals older reaction is not fun enough, so let's remember that this molecule, this, the product in this reaction, has three stereocenters, three chiral carbons, which means that stereochemically speaking, we can have eight different variations of our molecule, which is actually more like four pairs of enantiomers, but nonetheless, it's quite a lot. So if I add stereochemistry to my product, let's say I have the molecule like this where all of my bonds are cis to each other, the first thing that I'm going to pay attention to is the position of my electron withdrawing group, which is this guy. Then I can see that this group being cis to my electron withdrawing group and the part of my um, diene, that group is going to be drawn out and also the part of my Dana file, this part is cis to electron withdrawing group, which means it gotta be cis in my final product as well, which means that when I draw my starting material, I'm going to get a structure like that, where the green group is out and the uh, groups that I indicated with my orange color are in. So using my original numbering system, the atom A, which is right over here, that atom is the out atom, and atom C, which is right over here, that guy is cis to our electron withdrawing group in our final product, so that's why I'm also showing that cis in my starting material. Or how about molecule looking like this? Now I mix things up a little bit and I have some wedges and some dashes. Well, in this case, this atom over here, which is our atom A, so let me label that as atom A using my numbering system here, that is trans to my electron withdrawing group, which means that that atom would have to end up being in in my starting material. This atom over here, which is our atom C, well, that guy is trans to our electron withdrawing group, so in my starting material I would have to show a trans as well, meaning that my starting material would have to look something like that, where this atom over here, which was our atom A, is an in atom, and this atom over here, which is our atom C, is trans to our electron withdrawing group in our Dana file part of the molecule. I think questions like that are incredibly fun, and wouldn't that be just awesome to have something like that on the test, uh, or am I projecting here too much? Anyways, thanks for watching. If you learned something new today, boop that like button and subscribe for more. Check out this video next, and I will see you next time.